Welcome to this rapid revision session on the Godwins, or at least the House of Godwin. So what was the House of Godwin? A reminder that at this time England was split up into several large earldoms, each led by an earl. The earls would enforce the law as set out by the king in each of their earldoms. Effectively, this helped the king to govern the whole country at a time when communication was so slow and difficult. The Godwins were the most powerful noble family at the end of the Anglo-Saxon period. They were led by Earl Godwin of Wessex. This family helped the King of England, King Canute, and later, Edward the Confessor, rule England. Godwin had several children. They too would be incredibly important in ruling England, and crop it up, uh, up in our story quite a few times. So we're going to have a look at the Godwin family tree and see who was important and for what reason. Here's the Godwin family tree then. At the top is Earl Godwin of Wessex who died in 1053. He was married to a Danish woman, Githa. That's quite important culturally because it helps explain the mix of Saxon and Danish names and also the way that Earl Godwin was trying to play, play both sides here. The more Danish dominated parts of England did not always get on with the more Anglo-Saxon dominated parts of England. They had lots of children. We're not going to cover all of them, but we are going to cover the ones which are most important to our story. First, Harold Godwinson, and also Tostig Godwinson, a daughter, Edith, another son, Gif, yet another son, Leofwine, and finally, Wolfnoff. Let's take each in turn. Harold became Earl of Wessex and Sussex in 1050. He led military campaigns and became very popular and powerful. He claimed the throne in 1066. His marriage to Edith of Mercia meant the Godwins either dominated or influenced every English earldom. He also later became King of England, of course. Then we got Tostig Godwinson. Not quite such a happy story. Tostig became Earl of Northumbria in 1055, but wasn't popular. Harold ousted him on behalf of King Edward in 1065. Tostig sided with Harald Hardrada in his invasion of 1066, during which time he actually died. Then we have Edith. One of the most important duties of a noble daughter at this time was to marry well. They had more power than perhaps they would do later in the Norman period, but still, marriage was one of the most important ways that a woman could have influence. Edith became Queen of England, marrying Edward the Confessor. This shows the influence of the Godwins in England, although they never had any children together, so whether the marriage was ever consummated is, well, up to a guess, really. What about Gyrth and Leofwine? Gyrth was Earl of East Anglia, and Leofwine was Earl of Kent. Both were killed in the Battle of Hastings in 1066, along with their brother Harold. Sad face. And what about Wolfnoff? Wolfnoff became a hostage to the, of the Normans in 1051. This might explain why Harold went on a diplomatic mission there in 1064. Perhaps he was trying to rescue him. We'll never be entirely sure. So why was the House of Godwin quite so powerful? The Godwins were advisers to the king. This there gave them pa power and influence over laws and taxes. The Godwins helped Edward the Confessor become King of England. This meant that Edward had reason to reward them with wealth, power and influence. Harold Godwinson himself was a great military leader. This made him popular and made him a powerful ally of the king. The Godwins had huge wealth. This was partly because the earls were able to keep some of the taxes for themselves and partly because of the land that they had. Edward the Confessor had married Edith, Earl Godwin's daughter. This gave the Godwins royal connections, which would later strengthen Harold's claim to the throne. Harold led the king's army. This provided vital experience in defending the country. Some final points then. The Godwins were immensely powerful and wealthy. Earl Godwin was Earl of Wessex and the most powerful Earl in England. Earl Godwin's sons, the Godwinsons, became Earls too and the House of Godwin dominated English politics. Edith, the daughter of Godwin, married Edward the Confessor. So she had tremendous influence too. But ultimately, there would be no heir to the throne produced by Edith and Edward, which would lead a succession crisis and ultimately lead to Harold Godwinson becoming the King of England. And most of us know how that ended. Speaking of endings, that's the end of this rapid revision session. I hope it's been useful to you. If it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. 
If you've got a revision topic that you're desperate for me to do, put it in the comments below. And if I can move it up the list and do it, I'll do just that. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.